Okay, continuing on with some of these double angle and half angle kinds of problems. Here's the next kind of problem. Let me just show you an example and then we'll I'll try and explain how we would go about solving it. Looks pretty simple when you look at it. it says use the half angle formulas to find the exact value of the trigonometric function sine of negative 22.5 degrees. They point out key things. First of all, they're asking for an exact value. So you can't just go grab your because if they don't want an exact value, you can just grab your calculator, punch a couple keys, and you're done. That would be easy. But that would not be an exact value. They're asking for an exact value. And the other key is they sort of give us a big hint of how we should go about trying to solve this. They said use half angle formulas. So based upon that, let's talk about how we would go about solving this. So basically, they're saying, what is the sign of negative 22.5 degrees, exact value? Now, the whole key with finding exact values is you think about the unit circle, because the unit circle, those are our angles that we know the exact values for. And what is it? It starts out at 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, and then it builds, right? But the whole key, it's like 30, 45, and 60. Even over here, if I think about negative angles, because I have a negative, if I go in a negative direction, this would be negative 30. That's one of my special angles, negative 45, negative 60. These are my special angles. I know the exact trig functions, the exact values of these trig functions. But look at negative 22.5 is right here. It's not a special angle. I don't know what the sign of negative 22.5 degrees is. I'm sort of stuck. But then they say, hey, use the half angle formula. So let's write down the half angle formula for the sign. And if I remember correctly, it's, but I'm not gonna trust my, memory, it is 1 minus so let me just show you how to do this sort of step by step whether you sort of understand all the nuances of it let me just show you how to solve it and then as you do it you'll begin to understand it more what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume this angle I'm trying to find, I'm going to take my half angle right here, since they told me it's half angle for I'm going to assume that this is going to be worthwhile. I'm going to take this theta over 2 and I'm going to call it the angle I'm trying to figure out. So theta over two is negative 25. Now at the same time, I've got this little equation here. I want to go ahead and solve this for theta. In other words, you get theta by itself. So I multiply both sides by two, right? And if I do that, then I also say, well, theta would be negative 45, right? So I decided to take the angle they gave me. I'm going to call it theta over 2, and at the same time, I'm going to solve for theta. And what I'm going to do now is, I'm now going to take this formula and plug in negative 22.5 for theta over 2, and over here is theta, plug in negative 45. 
So I'm taking my formula and now I'm actually plugging in some actual angles. So theta over 2 is negative 22.5. 1 minus cosine of theta, but my theta is negative 45. Now when you look at this, this is actually what they originally are asking me to figure out. And I've now got it in the form of this half angle formula. But I look a little closer at this. Inside here, I have cosine of negative 45 degrees. And it turns out negative 45 degrees is a special angle. I actually know the value of the cosine negative 45 degrees. So I can actually plug in a number for this and I can actually do a calculation and get a number for this. In other words, when I started, I had no idea because this is not a special angle. I was sort of stuck. But by applying the half angle formula, I end up with the cosine of a special angle. So this is like this is like a sort of a tricky way to take a problem where I'm sort of stuck and I do a little bit of work and all of a sudden I've got a special angle here and I'm not stuck anymore. So in a minute we're going to do this calculation but here's the tricky part. I've still got this plus or minus here. I know I can't have both. So what should it be? Well, this is where I go up here. Since I'm trying to find the sine of negative 22.5, that's down here. It's in the fourth quadrant. What is the sine of an angle in the fourth quadrant? Remember the sine of the fourth quadrant is negative. So basically, I know this has to be a negative value. So let's say, what is the cosine of negative 45 degrees? Well, here's a negative 45 degree angle. The cosine of this down here, what's the cosine in quadrant four? It's positive. Turns out it's square root of two over two. Right, thinking back to unit circle, we know these 45 degree angles are square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, the x and the y. Cosine of this angle here, cosine of quadrant 4 is a positive number, and I know the x and the y of that are this. So and now it becomes an algebra problem. We've done these before. I need to combine these into one fraction. I'm going to make 1 to be 2 over 2. I end up with 2 minus square root of 2 over 2, all over 2. Now I fraction over a number. The 2 gets multiplied by the 2. Now, if I think of this as this fraction is two different square roots, square root of four is just two, so the bottom becomes two. Sort of ugly, but that is actually the answer. So once again, to review, this is not a special angle. I'm sort of stuck, but they told me to use half angle formulas. So based upon that, I said, okay, Let's just assume this initial angle they have given me, I'm going to call it my half angle, theta over 2, which means theta is negative 45. 
And then when I plug these in to my half angle formula, I end up with something where I've got my special angle here and I can actually plug in numbers. Let me do another one. This one's the same, although instead of having the problem in degrees, they give it to you in um, radians. I'll just write it down here. They say use the half angle formulas to figure out Once again, the old exact values, and they say use half angle formulas. So I'll do the same thing, except so now it's radians. I'm going to say, okay, here is my half angle formula for tangent. one minus cosine of theta over one plus cosine of theta. I'm probably not gonna finish this problem, but I just wanna set it up so you can see what happens again. Negative five pi over 12, it's not a special angle. I don't know that. But they tell me, okay, use a half angle. So I'll do the same thing. I'll say, okay, let's just start out here and see if this works out. I'm going to take the angle they give me and I'm going to set it equal to theta over 2 and I'm going to take this also and solve it for theta. Now let's see, let's do this over here because some people may not see it if I do a shortcut. Multiply both sides by 2. So negative 5 pi over 12 times 2, this 2 over 12 reduces down to 6. If you multiply all this out, and the important thing is now when I plug these in now to my half angle formula, one minus cosine theta, theta is now negative five pi over six, one plus cosine negative five pi over six. And the key thing is now negative five pi over six is a special angle. Matter of fact, five pi over six, negative five pi over six is right here. And I know the x and the y, negative square root of 3 over 2, 1 half, negative 1 half. So this right here, if you actually finish the problem, is negative square root of 3 over 2. And the plus or minus, since I know I'm in quadrant 3, what is the tangent at quadrant 3? Or quadr yeah, quadrant 3. It's positive. All right. So they have a few problems like that where they give you a trig function. It's not a special angle. They say find exact value, use half angle, and this is the steps you go through. All right. A few more problems, then we're done with this module. I know it's a lot of work, but these are not always easy problems to begin with. So here's one. They give an equation. Cosine th two theta plus 14 sine squared theta equals 10. And they want you to solve this. They want to know what theta is, and they say 
just give the angles between 0 and 2 pi. So this is almost like solving an equation, but you know what? Um, cosine 2 theta, sine squared theta, I don't have a way to solve this. I need these trig functions to more or less be the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I notice that one of my formulas for this double angle, the second one on our sheet is this right here. And I realize, you know what? If I replace this with this, then I have something that I might be able to solve. So this I put in here, so then plus 14 sine squared theta equals 10. So these are like terms. I can combine these. I'm going to subtract 1, move the 1 over here, combine these. I get 12 sine squared theta equals 9. If I divide both sides by 12, which is 3 fourths. Now, if I want to, so if I have sine squared of theta equals 3 fourths, and I want to solve for sine of theta, what do I do? Take square root of both sides. Square root of 4 is just 2. So I'm saying, okay, what are the angles where the sine is either plus or minus square root of 3 over 2? Well, if you think about the unit circle, that's all the... Um, that's the power over 3, 2 power over 3, right? It's all these angles here. Matter of fact, those are your four answers. Those angles right there. So this is a way where you're given an equation where you're totally stuck, but then if you go use your double angle formula, you can replace this with something that allows you to actually solve it. So that's not too bad. All right, last kind of problem. Um, let me just write down the problem and we'll talk about it. Because this also involves now inverse trig functions, which we've already talked about. Hopefully you remember about inverse trig functions. So once again, so this is one of these sort of composite functions, the sine of 2 times the inverse cosine once again like always they want an exact value all right this looks very messy but let's don't get overwhelmed just sort of take a little bit at a time the first thing I realize is I see I've got an inverse cosine function here if you recall back to when we learned about inverse trig functions, the thing I always did is I said, anytime you have an inverse trig function, just think of that whole thing as an angle, right? As a matter of fact, let's go off and see if we know what angle this is. So in a sense, what I'm saying is, let's go find an angle where the cosine is square root of 3 over 2. Now you remember with inverse cosine functions, I'm restricted. I can only look at angles between 0 and pi. So if I look in here, what's the angle where the cosine is square root of 3 over 2? Right here, right? Power of 6. 
So theta is pi over 6. So I'm going to plug in pi over 6 into this whole thing right here. So now it becomes sine of 2 times pi over 6. This whole thing, I've determined it's pi over 6. If I simplify this, turns out sine of pi over 3. What is sine of pi over 3? Unit circle. What's the sine of this right here? Square root of 3 over 2. Not that bad, right? Now there's one more. It's a little twist. This wasn't bad because when I went to figure out my angle here, turns out this was a special angle. But here's what they do just to be a little more devious. Maybe I should start a new piece of paper. I might need the room. They give you the same kind of problem. They say find the answer and they say make it an exact value. The sine of 2 times the inverse cosine of 5 thirteenths. All right, first thing I say to myself is, you know what? I got an inverse trig function. I could think of this whole thing as an angle, and I'll call it theta. So let's go see if we can figure this out. So we're basically saying, what's the inverse cosine of 5 thirteenths? Well, unfortunately, this is not any kind of result of a special value. I don't really know. I don't know an angle where the cosine's 5 thirteenths. Matter of fact, I can rewrite this. That's the same way of saying, when I say go find an angle where the cosine of theta is 5 thirteenths, this is what I'm really saying. But this is not a special angle. I can't tell you what this angle is off the top of my head. Can I figure out what this angle is? Actually, I can. And how do I do that? I have to go create a right triangle. So, ka, adjacent's 5. Hypotenuse is 13. This side over here, 13 squared minus 5 squared, which is square root of 144. Actually, this side is 12. So based upon this information, I have this triangle here. This whole thing I call theta. So why don't I just rewrite this sine of 2 theta. And you know what? I can use a double angle formula. Sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta. Now I'm going to plug in based upon this triangle numbers here, but I need to figure out if I'm going to have positive or negative numbers. So let's go back to right here. Cosine of theta is 5 thirteenths. Where do I think that is on the unit circle? What quadrant is that going to be in? Well, I know the cosine, it's zero here. Whoops. The cosine right here is 1. Up here it's 0, right, because it's the value of x. 5 thirteenths is somewhere in quadrant 1 or quadrant 4. But you know what? It's an inverse trig function. 
I can only be up here. So therefore I know this angle theta, I'm in quadrant one, which means when I plug in sine and cosine, these are both gonna be positive numbers. So sine of theta, here's my triangle for theta, sine opposite of our hypotenuse, it's a positive number, cosine adjacent of our hypotenuse, positive number, 2 times 5 is 10, times 12 is 120, 13 and 13 is 169, and that is the answer. So this problem is a little trickier because unlike the one before where this was a special angle, this one's not. I have to rewrite it, create my right triangle, and then go from there. All right, so those are the kinds of problems you have in Module 7. I think I've done examples of most of the problems, so hopefully you're able to figure them out.